we want to welcome you to the Back to Basics online church, the church where God is moving and building people up and pouring out his spirit. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I love you all, too. I love you all, too. I love you all, too. Dustina, we love you. Thank you for pinch hitting for us last week. You did a marvelous job. Still getting kudos from people by email concerning you. And thanks, Dustina and your family for stepping up to the plate and ministering. While Jackie and I were out of town last week, we give God the praise and we thank God for raising you up. Thank God. Thank God for all of you for participating, for your prayers for Dustina and for your prayers for other people. Thank you that you're standing together and being strong as one body in Christ. Thank you, Ryan, for all of your prayers and the leadership you're providing for your family. We just thank God for you. And so we've got a wonderful message today, a message that will help you, will encourage you, will bless you. A lot of people are going through difficulties, but we thank God. <clears throat> we thank God. We're praying for Michael, Dustina's husband. He's out there. He's got his coveralls and thermals and gloves. He's got a workout work today outdoors in Tennessee, and it's it's freezing there. So God bless Michael. Go with him. Cover him with your precious blood. Keep him warm. Keep him safe. And we thank you, Father. He's going out there to earn a living for his family. And so God bless him. Give him favor today. And cover him, cover him, and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. And now, Lord, we want to pray for everyone who's online and those who will be watching the video. We know that everyone cannot come online live. We uh, pray for Megan, who's going to uh, her local church today, and, and that she's going to be a blessing uh, with her mother to her local church. We pray for all of your people. Father, we lift up all of your people to you today. And we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, Father. We thank you for your love for all mankind. You love everybody, and you love us all equally. You're no respecter of persons. And so we just pray for the church, the whole body of Christ. We pray for the brick and mortar assemblies. We pray for the online assemblies. We pray for your people, that you'll bless your people all over the world. Bless those who are listening uh, in from from other nations, Lord God. We lift up our friends in Kenya and in other nations, in Sweden. Bless them, Lord God. We lift up our friends in, in Dubai. Bless them and keep them, Lord, and meet every need. You are the awesome God. You are the God of love, and we worship you with our whole hearts. We worship you with our whole hearts. And so, Father, we ask that you forgive us of our sins, cleanse us of all iniquity, create in us clean hearts, and renew right spirits within us in the name of Jesus. And we thank you. We pray today that you'll save people all over the globe, that you'll save people today. And we give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Praise God. Well, before we go into our message, we want to just ask Anyone who wants to unmute their phone and share a testimony, tell somebody what God is doing in your life. Who will unmute their phone today and give a testimony? Even if you say it's cold, but God is good, that's a testimony. So somebody unmute your phone and give a testimony. Um. Yeah, Pastor Carter. Hey, Hi, this is the Celebrity. God bless you. Hi, God bless you too, and God bless everyone online. I wanted to give you another update on Israel Gonzalez. He's the one that had the uh, received the gift of the liver and kidney transplant uh, from you know in in May, and it was you know ab after a long struggle of uh, you know that he was way too fat. Uh, they were not going to give him a transplant and then with prayer and then he all of a sudden quickly lost weight and was able to get on the transplant list and then after three days 
received uh, the transplant. You know, it was just like a miracle where he was able, uh, where through God, you know, and lots of prayer that he received both the liver and kidney transplant. And so I wanted to give you the update that in November that he received another um, surgery to, um, you know, to clean out any type of infection that, that he had because they found he had an infection, uh, but that since then that he's been on the mend and that we're hoping that he will be able to uh, come back to work on uh, like around January 9th and that's what the status is. So it's just all for the, the glory of God and we praise him. Hallelujah. Zispa, thank you, thank you, thank you for that testimony. We thank God for what God is doing in Israel Gonzalez's life. We thank God for Zispa for our standing guard. Uh, she's on her guard post interceding for uh, Israel and his family. We thank God. And God bless Zispa for standing on her guard post and continue to bless Israel. Thank you for the mighty things, the miracles you're doing in his life and uh, Israel's father said he didn't think they would have him for Thanksgiving. But God, you're the miracle worker. You are God. There is nothing impossible for you. So we thank God. Thank God for, for this, for that testimony. And we praise God for what he's doing. We want to welcome Christy Carpenter and Aaron Carpenter and all the carpenters from Idaho. Praise the Lord. Will anyone else want to unmute your phone and share a testimony? Tell us what God is doing in your life. Jackie Fisher, were you about to come on? Yes, I was, Pastor Carter. Okay, good. Can Let's hear from okay? you. Yes. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I just want to give praise to the Lord because he listens to all my prayers and he answers every prayer perfectly and that's my testimony for today hallelujah hallelujah Jackie Fisher today she's a woman of few words but what powerful words God answers her prayers, and he answers every prayer, and God listens. Thanks, Jackie Fisher. We praise God. Jackie and Russell Fisher, bless them, God, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Jackie, you're so important to all of us, and we love you, and thank God for you. Anyone else want to unmute your phone and just share what God is doing? It doesn't have to be miraculous. Just share what God is doing. Good morning, church. Good morning, Pastor. God bless you, Justina. A um, couple things. One, and I'll make this real quick, and I know I'm not very good at that, but <laughs> I need prayer for my sister. She's going through a really hard time right now. She's having a lot of trials come upon her, and her faith is not very strong right now, so... She needs prayer. Um, also, pray that the Lord continues to keep our power on and our heat. We have a lot of people who are without right now surrounding us. We are covered in ice, and it, it's really nasty out there. And I pray that Michael makes it home safely this evening. So if you could, continue to keep us in prayer. Keep the ones in prayer that are without. And we're praying that the Lord will restore their power very quickly for them. Um, also, um, for those who aren't on my Facebook or anything, I just want to give a shout out to y'all and thank y'all for the ones on here who had been praying for me and who was with me and bared with me last Sunday and, uh, the Holy Spirit was with me. He took complete control. <laughs> Some of you that are on my Facebook, you saw my video. Uh, I did not remember a lot of what was said last weekend. The Holy Spirit had complete control over it, and I am just grateful for what he did. I've had a lot of messages, emails, texts, you name it, of everyone wanting to get in contact, who wants me to pray with them, who wants me to teach them. I don't know how to teach, but the Holy Spirit will do it. 
and it, God is really moving and working right now, and all glory to God. I give complete praise to Him. I'm humbled by it, and I am truly blessed by everyone on here for your prayers, your love, your thoughts, everything that you've given, and I truly appreciate all of y'all, and I appreciate you, Pastor, and I thank you for for all that you've done, uh, you and Sister Jackie, and the opportunity that you give me for this. So I just thank y'all, and I love each and every one of y'all and keeping y'all in my prayers, so thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, Dustina. We thank you for your testimony, for uh, your prayer requests, and for sharing. And thanks again for standing up to the plate last weekend and, and presenting the Word of God. You did a marvelous job. And we give God the glory and honor. And yes, we're going to pray for your sister that uh, who's having a lot of issues now, that God reveal himself and that God deliver her. We pray, God, that you will help uh, Dustina's sister to be strong in the Lord and in the power of your might, that no weapon formed against her shall prosper. And so, God, do a marvelous work in this woman's life, we pray. And, Lord, we pray also that you'll keep the power on not only in Tennessee, but everywhere where it's cold and freezing, yes. that you'll keep the power on, keep the lights on, keep the people warm. And bless Michael and all others who have to go out and work outdoors in these elements today. Bless them and keep them, Lord. You are the provider. And, Lord, we just thank you. Build a hedge of protection around each and every one. And we thank you. Lord, continue to bless Dustina and her family Lord, rebuke the devourer. Keep the enemy off them, Lord God, and bless them as they continue to serve you as you raise them up into mighty ministry, and we give you the praise. Then, Lord, we pray that you'll bless each listener today, each participant. We're family, God. Bless the online church family. Meet every need, Lord God. We declare that every need is met by you. For the word says, for my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. And now, Father, we ask that you guide us and keep us and continue to bless us to the praise of your glory. And we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We take one more person, one more person. Amen. Thank you. All. God bless. And share. Okay. Um, I always like to hear from Idaho. I like to hear from Idaho. Christy, come on and say hello to us. Good morning, Mr. Carter. Good morning, Christy Carpenter and the Carpenter family. How are you today? Doing well. Blessed by the Lord. Um, I do have a prayer request. I have... Um, a couple little buddies, one's a fourth grader and one's a fifth grader, and they're brothers. They have a baby sister, and a few weeks ago, their mom signed their rights away, and they've been in foster care for a long time now. What happened to and, the mom? What happened to the mom? Um, I don't know. I think she's into drugs. I can't. This is speculation. I don't know. Okay. The foster mom is an amazing woman. Um, they're part of our church here, and she brings them to All Stars, so I teach them every Wednesday night. Anyways, um... The little boys are going through a really, really hard time, and the youngest one got put in the mental hospital this last week, and if you guys could please pray for these little boys. They have a baby sister, too, and they're scared and lonely, and they are going through so much, so can you just pray for strength and peace and God to move mighty in this whole entire situation for these kids. My heart's ripped out, and I've had to do a lot of ministering to them. So, yeah, if you guys could keep them in your prayers, it would truly, truly bless me. 
Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, Christy Carpenter. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. We have the responsibility, ladies and gentlemen, to pray for one another, and, and we're certainly going to pray for these little children and their mom and for the foster mother and, and pray healing uh, for this family, and we continue to hold them up before the Lord. Father God, we lift up this family, uh, the fourth and fifth grader, and their little sister. We ask that you cover them with the blood of Jesus. We pray for their mother, Lord, that their mother be delivered from whatever uh, demon has been attacked, has been attacking her. We pray for the wholesomeness and the wholeness and the healing for this family. We thank you that you have raised up a foster mother to stand in the gap for this family. We pray that you'll anoint her to bring this family together and minister the love of Jesus Christ to them until you get the mother back to where she ought to be and the father wherever he is. We pray for a wholesome wholesomeness for this family. We pray for healing. We pray for the little one, the young man who's been placed in a, in a mental institution. We pray, Father, that you'll heal his mind. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. We command you in the name of Jesus to take your hands off this family. We pull down every stronghold in the name of Jesus. Lord God, give this family the mind of Jesus Christ. You said in your word, let this mind be in us. That was in Christ Jesus. So Father, we commit this situation to you. We cast every burden of this family unto you. And we thank you. You said in your word, you will sustain them. And we give you the praise. And we give you the glory. Thank you for using Christy to stand in the gap. Uh, not only to be their teacher, but also to be their intercessor. And to show them love. And we praise you. And we bless you. We thank you, Lord, that you have never lost the case. We thank you that everything we pray for, you hear our prayers. And if we know that you hear us, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of you. And so we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. Praise God. Well, church family, I love the way you're coming together and you're praying for one another. You're standing in the gap for one another. And so uh, let's continue to do this. God put us together for a purpose. It was not an accident that we all came together. So let's stand together. Let's love one another. Let's fight for one another with the spiritual weapons that God has given us. In a moment, I'm going to share with you uh, uh, part three of Satan's mighty weapons and how we can overcome him. We're going to look at Satan's weapons that he uses. We've looked at for two weeks uh, and two previous weeks, we've looked at uh, the weapons of the enemy and how we overcome him. We're going to give you another list today, and this is going to bless you. So we're going to ask our Ryan Trogler. Ryan will lead us in prayer. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning, Ryan. God bless you. Uh, God bless you, and God bless this online church. Um, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for making another beautiful day. We want to thank you for dying on the cross and shedding your blood for all of our sins, and not just one person, just everybody. <clears throat> we want you to come down here and bless and protect the people out in that winter storm. Make sure they stay warm and safe, and praise, praise you to turn the heat and electricity back on. If it's out, turn it back on. Come down here and heal the sick. Make the blind see. Make the deaf hear your awesome word. And make them see you coming, Lord, from the west to the east. That's and all that, we praise you, glorify you, and love you. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Ryan. And thank you for your love for uh, all people. Thank you for your love for the Lord. And I want to pray for you, Ryan. God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you open up a door for Ryan Trogler. I ask you today, in the name of Jesus, that you give him an increase on his job. Give him promotion, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Father, that you will meet every need of this household in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless his wife, Tara, and bless his daughter, Jenna. We declare and decree that every need is met by you, God, and we give you the glory. We take that heavy weight off Ryan and the weight of, of, of concern and, and worry and anxiety. We take it off him, the weight of, of financial uh, 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 blessings. 
we take this weight off him, God, and, and, and commit it unto you. We commit every care unto you. We thank you. We thank you that you have a, an increase in his job, a promotion, and it's coming. It's coming, Ryan. And we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank so, you, Pastor. Thank you. Oh, man, I love you, man. I thank God for you. God's going to do it. God is going to do it. He's not a God that, that he should fail. And I praise God that we have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And the Lord said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and we shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto us. And I love the way you all ask for other people. You seek for other people. You knock and the door is open for others. And God will not forget you. When you roll that way, asking for others, interceding for others, intervening for others, God will supply all of your needs. And so we thank you. Okay, let's take a look at uh, the Word of God today, and, and let's look at our, our, our message, um, part three of Satan's Mighty Weapons. And when I say Satan's Mighty Weapons, his weapons are not mightier than God. His weapons are not mightier than God. He's got some mighty weapons. Look, don't sell Satan short. We do not glorify the devil. We do not sell him short. We recognize him as a terrible foe. Uh, we don't take him lightly, and, and we should be alert. We should stay woke, as Dustina says. Stay woke. Stay on the wall. But we know that our God is omnipotent. Our God is omnipresent. Our God is omniscient. He's everywhere at once. He's all-powerful, and he knows everything. But the Bible tells us not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. We're not ignorant of his devices. That means we've got to stay woke. We've got to be alert. We've got to see the enemy when he comes. We've got to recognize his attacks. We've got to recognize his strategies. We're not to blink our eyes and, and hope he'll go away. No. When we see that sucker coming, we shut him down by the authority of the name and blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Those of you who are listening uh, to this uh, message, uh, I want you to go to my YouTube channel, Leroy Carter, and look at parts one and part two to come up to date to where we are today. This is a powerful series. I'm going to just review um, the, the things we've talked about in the last couple of weeks. In the first portion of this uh, message, we talked about how uh, uh, Satan comes against God's people and, and, the, and the weapons that he uses to try to destroy God's people. He uses uh, deception. He uses disappointment. He uses delays. Uh, he uses uh, discouragement. These are weapons that he uses. But we learn in uh, pa the past how to overcome uh, deception and distractions, delays, disappointments, and discouragement. In part two, we looked at um, dis disappointment, discouragement, depression, and debt. Debt, D-E-B-T, debt. A lot of people are going into debt this time of the year. People are taking out loans, and they're not reading the bottom lines. These loan companies are charging 24, 25, 26 percent on the loans and, and, and getting people in bondage. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to encourage you, do not go into debt for Christmas. Don't spend a whole lot of money trying to satisfy, satisfy people. We know you love people, but don't try to satisfy them with expensive gifts because you can't satisfy people. A lot of the gifts you buy, uh, the people are going to take them back to the store the day after Christmas and get the reimbursement for it. So we want to encourage you not to go into debt. And today I want to look at uh, some of Satan's mighty weapons and show you uh, how you can defeat the enemy in these areas. Today we're going to look at the weapons of sickness and disease. 
the weapons of doubt and unbelief, the weapon of fear, the weapon of worry, and the weapon of anxiety. Let me repeat this list. This, these are biggies. These are heavy hitters, ladies and gentlemen. These are uh, weapons that are taking a lot of people under, even believers taking them under. Uh, we're looking at today the weapons of sickness and disease, the weapons of doubt and unbelief, the weapon of fear, the weapon of worry, the weapon of anxiety. We're going to take each one one by one. I'll talk about each one briefly. And these are demons, ladies and gentlemen. These are demons. Sickness is a demon. Disease is a demon. Doubt is a demon. Unbelief is a demon. When you find someone who does not uh, receive the gospel, they don't uh, believe the gospel. They're going to try to keep working out things their own way. That's a demon controlling them. Fear is a demon. Fear. There are a lot of people who are living in fear. There are a lot of believers, Christians, born again by the blood of Jesus, who are living in fear. The Bible tells us we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We can preach this over and over and over again, and I pray that you will preach it over and over again. I pray that you'll commit uh, Isaiah 54, 17 to your heart. Commit it to your heart. Isaiah 54, 17 says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Write it down and then personalize it. Write it down and memorize it. Then personalize it, saying, No weapon formed against me shall prosper. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. No weapon formed against Israel Gonzalez shall prosper. No weapon formed against Dustina shall prosper. No weapon formed against Michael shall prosper. You declare it. When you declare it, ladies and gentlemen, when you declare God's word in the atmosphere, God's word reaches even into the heavenlies. Ladies and gentlemen, when you say God's word, it reaches into the heavenlies. Satan cannot block the word of God. He cannot hinder the word of God. The only way Satan can hinder the word of God is if you have hidden sin in your life. You've got sin, unconfessed sin. So confess your sins. Confess your sins even before you uh, pray for someone else, even before you make a bold declaration. Even before you preach, you've got to confess your sins. Every time I preach, I've got to confess my sins even before I preach. I've got to confess hidden and secret sins. I've got to confess thoughts that I should not be thinking. The Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, God will not hear me. We're going to give you a formula today for living in victory. We're going to give you a formula today that the Holy Ghost has given unto me. That you can defeat sickness. You can defeat disease. You can defeat doubt. You can defeat unbelief. You can defeat fear. You can defeat worry. You can defeat anxiety. These are demons, ladies and gentlemen. Demons. And God has given us authority over all demonic powers. He said in his word, he said in his word, I give you, behold, I give you the keys to the kingdom. Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. God has given us the keys, Ryan Trudler, to uh, everything uh, that we need. We can bind the enemy when he comes against us. We can loose the power of God. We can loose uh, the holiness of God in every situation. That lady that we're praying for, your sister Dustina, we can bind those demons that have come against her. Uh, we can bind those demons. We can uh, sanctify this woman unto the Lord so that she can hear the word of God. And we can pray that there be no doubt, no unbelief, no fear, no worry, no anxiety in her life. Ladies and gentlemen, we need one another. That is why Jesus calls us the body of Christ. 
We need to pray for one another. We need to stand on the wall for one another. We need to be watchmen and watchwomen on the tower, on the wall. We need to look out for the enemy. We need to blow the trumpet when we see the enemy coming. When the enemy comes, comes we need to sound the alarm. We need to blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on God's holy mountain. We need to alert one another that the enemy is coming. But in addition to this, we need to take up our weapons. God has given us mighty weapons, ladies and gentlemen. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. When sickness invades your family or invades you, raise up a standard against that sickness. The Bible declares that when the enemy comes upon us like a flood, the Spirit of God will raise up a standard against him. Ladies and gentlemen, do not forget, don't ever forget that the Bible says, greater is he in us than he that's in the world. If you're saved, you're washed in the blood of the Lamb. And because you're saved, the Holy Spirit lives in you. And the Bible declares that whatever comes against you, whatever comes against you, when the enemy comes against you like a flood, the Spirit of the living God will raise up a standard against it. Do not underestimate the power of the Holy Ghost. Do not understand the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes, your body might be sick. You might have aches and pains. Yes, uh, the weather may be threatening to shut down your, your resources or cut off your electricity or uh, 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 remove the heat from your house. Uh, the, 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 the elements may be uh, uh, working against you, but God will raise up a standard against the enemy. Ladies and gentlemen, when we look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We've got to take our stand, whether we're healthy or whether we're sick, whether we're uh, uh, doing well or whether uh, we're attacked by disease. We have greater in us the Holy Spirit. He will raise up a standard against all form of sickness, all manner of disease. We've got to trust in the Lord. Put God's word on it. Put God's word on that influenza. Put God's word on that Ebola in Central Africa. Put that God's word on that malaria, uh, e Elijah, in Kenya. Put the word of God on that malaria. Shut down that epidemic of Ebola. Shut down that malaria. Uh, 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 shut down that homosexuality. Shut down that lesbianism. Shut down that alcoholism. Shut down those drugs. Whatever the plague is that comes against us, the Bible says no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And when the enemy comes upon us, your first, your first uh, defense is to call upon the name of the Lord. Worship the Lord. Satan hates it when you worship God. Satan hates it when you call upon the name of the Lord. Satan is pulling out his big guns, ladies and gentlemen. His big guns, sickness, disease, doubt, unbelief, fear, worry, anxiety. Satan has attacked many people with sickness. He's attacked many people with disease. He's attacked many people with doubt. He's attacked many people with unbelief. He's attacking blood wash, Holy Ghost filled believers with these things. But we can, can raise up a standard against them in the Holy Spirit. We take a stand against everything that Satan has. Why? Because the Bible says, greater is he in us than he that's in the world. You've got to open your mouth sometimes and tell the devil, devil, greater is he in me than he that's in the world. You might have to open your mouth and say, yes, I'm sick right now. You hit me with this sickness. But this, these heavy burdens, they won't last. God is going to make a way, turn my midnight into day. You'll be able to declare, Satan had me bound. I felt like giving up, but something deep inside of me helped me to keep going on. You've got to declare to the devil, devil on Christ Jesus, I stand. On Christ the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. You've got to be like Job, 
ladies and gentlemen, though he slay me, yet will I trust in the Lord. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in the Lord. God honors this kind of faith. He honors this kind of trust. You may be uh, bedridden, not able to uh, 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 get a drink of water. A friend of mine, he's starting an online church this weekend. I've been mentoring him. Mark Moyer up in uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Mark called me uh, two days ago. He said he was sick as a dog. Eight days, for eight days he was sick as a dog. He felt like he was dying. Well, Satan attacked him so that he would not begin his online church because Satan knows that when he opens his online church, people are going to get saved. So Satan attacked this preacher, and this preacher said he was sick as a dog. He thought he was dying. He had never experienced anything like this, but he raised up a standard. He said he was so sick, it was 2 o'clock in the morning. His wife was working uh, uh, on the night shift, and he had to call his son to bring him a, to come over and get him a glass of water. That's how sick he was, ladies and gentlemen. He couldn't move. He had to call his son to drive a few miles and come and give him a drink of water. The devil is a liar, Dustina. The devil is a liar, Jackie Fisher. The devil is a liar, Ryan Trogler. The devil is a liar, Jeep Girl. The devil is a liar, Christy Carpenter. The devil is a liar, Nathan. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. You know a lot of people, and I know a lot of people. This time of year, they're being plagued by sickness. We see people dying from diseases. We people, see people uh, who are in doubt. Ladies and gentlemen, even after 2,000 years of telling the Christmas story, of preaching the gospel, of preaching praises about Jesus, of telling his story, there are still billions of people in the world who do not believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening today, if you're online live or you're listening to this tape, I want to ask you, are you saved? Are you saved? And if you say I'm not saved, you need to get saved today. You can be saved today. Well, preacher, how can I be saved? The scripture says that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. All you've got to do is confess with your mouth. Tell Jesus you believe he's the son of God. Ask him to come into your life. Tell him you believe he died on the cross for your sins. Tell him you believe he raised himself from the dead. And ask him to come into your life and receive him by faith. That's how easy it is to get saved. And then commit your life to Jesus. Don't turn away from him anymore. Let him into your life. Get into a Bible-believing church. Get, get into a Bible-believing church. Go to a, a brick-and-mortar church or an online church. Go somewhere where they're teaching the Word of God. You need the Word of God. Praise God. Praise God. Salvation is free. You don't have to live in unbelief and doubt. If, if, if uh, God calls you tonight, will you be able to go home with him to spend eternity? If the Lord comes tonight, will you be ready to go with Jesus? If you can't answer yes to this, then you need to get saved. You need to confess your sins today. You and I, we need to be ready. Jesus is coming back soon. He's coming like a thief in the night. He said in his word, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and live with him and he with me. So there is no excuse for anybody not being saved. There is no excuse. I know people, they've been sitting up in church every Sunday for the last 50 years and still are not saved. You can ask many of them, are you saved? And they will say, I don't know. I hope so. Ladies and gentlemen, don't hope so. You need to know that you're saved. You need to know that you know that you know that you know that you're saved. Well, uh, how can I know? I've already told you, but I'll repeat it. The scripture says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So put away those gods, those idols. Put away that alcohol. Put away those drugs. Put away that sex. 
Put away that love for money. Put away those distractions. Put away uh, uh, those disappointments. Put away all those frustrations and call upon the name of the Lord. You need to know, you need to know, you need to know. And ladies and gentlemen, don't wait on your family. Don't wait on other members. If, if, if your friends say, no, they're not ready yet, don't wait on them. You keep on trusting in the Lord. Now keep praying for them. Keep praying for them. But don't let anybody cause you to lose your crown. Uh, Terry, don't let anybody cause you to lose your crown. Don't let anybody pull you away from Jesus Christ. We're talking about victory today over sickness, disease, doubt, unbelief, fear, worry, and anxiety. A lot of people are living in fear today. Uh, with the things going on in our government, all these investigations, and you don't know who's telling the truth and who's not telling the truth. And with uh, armies rising on borders of nations and war uh, and threats of war, a lot of people are living in fear. But God says, keep your eyes on him. God says, I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Ladies and gentlemen, focus on Jesus. Keep your mind on Jesus. The scripture says, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Keep your mind and heart fixed on Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. There will be wars and rumors of wars. And should war break out today, you keep on trusting in the Lord. Hallelujah. There are many people who are worrying themselves to death. I know Christians. I know born-again believers washed in the blood of Jesus. And all they do is worry, worry, worry. God did not make you to worry. Psalm 139, 14 says, You are fearfully and wonderfully made that you might praise him. God did not make you to worry. He made you to praise him. So flip the script. Turn that frown upside down. Uh, get those wrinkles out of your forehead. Start praising God. Stop worrying. Worry is a demon. Well, what can you do about that demon? Bind that sucker. Bind him. How can I bind him? By speaking God's word against him. Say to that demon of worry, demon of worry, I bind you by the authority of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, based on the blood of Jesus shed on Calvary. When you bind that demon, ladies and gentlemen, he's bound. Psalm 149 says, when we praise God, the enemy is bound in chains and fetters. The nobles, the kings, the powers, the principalities, the ruler spirits, Satan's heavy hitters, they are bound. They cannot work against you. They cannot be effective. You have the power to bind and loose. You have the power to uh, bind and loose and to uh, do what God says to do. So open your mouth. Put the word of God on it. Put the word of God on it and let God do the work. When you put the word of God on it, the Holy Ghost goes to work because God's word will not return to the void. God told me just the other day, he said, my son, my word cannot come back to me empty. It cannot come back. So learn how to wait on me. Learn how to wait on me. And I want to say to you, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. If God delays his answer, you wait on him. Be like Daniel. Daniel prayed and Daniel waited 21 days. And, and the angel of the Lord broke through with his answer for Daniel after Daniel fasted and prayed for 21 days. And a lot of people can't fast that long. Many people give up after the first or second day of fasting and praying. But Daniel waited on the Lord and the angel showed up. The angel said, God heard you the first day you prayed. When you committed the fast, when you began praying 21 days ago, God heard you and he sent me. God dispatched me from heaven 21 days ago, Daniel. And it has taken me all this time to get to you because I have had to fight against the powers and the principalities, the rulers of, of the wickedness in this world, spiritual wickedness, the rulers in high places. The angel said I had to fight 
those demons in the atmosphere. I had to come against the, the ruler spirit that's against this nation. I had to fight them to get to you. And the battle became so intense, I had to call the archangel Michael to come and assist me. And now, Daniel, here's the answer to your prayers. Ladies and gentlemen, we can learn a lot by reading scriptures. Then the angel said to Daniel, and now I've got to fight my way back through all those principalities and all those demons to get back to heaven. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're engaged in spiritual war. There's a war going on. I hope you'll be able to take our course in the Paul Beckley School of Prophecy, War in the Spirit. There's a war going on. Learn how to engage in warfare. Learn that when you engage with the weapons God has given us, that you cannot lose. You cannot be defeated. We cannot be defeated. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Isaiah 54, 17 promises us. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Ladies and gentlemen, there are people who live in anxiety. Anxiety, always anxious, uh, restless spirit. Always got to be working, busy, busy, busy. Always. Uh, every now and then, I've got to tell Jackie, Jackie, sit down. Sit down. You don't have to work yourself to death. Sit down. You don't have to be like uh, uh, Martha, the sister of Mary. Every now and then, we've got to be like Mary and sit at the feet of Jesus. Sometimes you've got to put that, that dishcloth down. You've got to put that vacuum cleaner down. Uh, you got to put that paintbrush down. Uh, sometimes we got to sit quietly before the Lord and worship him and praise him and honor him. A lot of people are not getting their blessings because they're too anxious. They're too busy, busy, busy. Go from one project to another. Uh, 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 never resting. God wants us to rest. He wants us to rest. He's promised us rest. And so... In times of rest, that's a good time to praise God, thank Him, worship Him, thank God for what He's already done. Some people can't get blessings because they haven't thanked God for what God has done. Give God the praises. All praise and glory belong to God. Thank Him. Thank Him for what He's done. This is a time of year where uh, as we come to the close of another year, it should be a time of reflection. Let God know that you appreciate all that he's done. Let him know that you appreciate what he's doing and what he's going to do. Give God the praise. Uh, you ought to take time out and praise the Lord. You ought to take time out and give him the glory and honor. Don't let anxiety overwhelm you. Don't let worry overwhelm you. Don't let fear overwhelm you. Don't let unbelief and doubt overwhelm you. Don't let disease and sickness overwhelm you. These are demons. And we serve the mighty God. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. God knows when to move. He knows how to move. See these heavy burdens? They won't last. God is going to make a way. Turn our midnights into day. Oh yeah, Satan had me bound. I felt like giving up. Dustina, but something deep inside of me makes me keep going on. Hey, Jackie Fisher, Satan had us bound. We felt like giving up. We said there's no hope, but something deep inside of us. We're talking about the Holy Ghost, God, the Spirit of the living God, God in us, Christ in us, the hope of glory. He said, don't quit. Don't give up. Press on. Press on, Terry. Press on. Press on, Christy. Press on. God knows your needs, and no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So in the name of Jesus, I bind every demon of sickness. I bind every demon of disease. I bind every demon of doubt. I bind every demon of unbelief. I bind every demon of fear. I bind every demon of worry. I bind every demon of anxiety by the authority of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and I command that these demon spirits, sickness, disease, doubt, unbelief, fear, worry, anxiety, along with deception, distractions, delays, disappointment, discouragement, depression, debt, 
I command that you all go back to the abyss. Leave God's chosen alone. I break your strategy against the body of Christ. I pull down every stronghold by the authority of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, I thank you that you've given us the keys to the kingdom. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I lose healing. I lose faith. I lose praise and worship and honor and glory to your name. Praise God. Praise God. I lose rest and the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. I lose happiness, joy, peace, love, meekness, self-control. And I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. Let the glory of the Lord rise within us. Let the glory of the Lord rise within us. Be glorified, Lord. We thank you. Bless your people. Bless your people. Bless the listeners. Bless those who are listening by our audio. Bless them, Lord God. And save God. Save, heal, and deliver. We give you the praise. Thank you, Father, for this online church family. Meet every need. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Father, for promotion for Ryan. Thank you, Father, for blessing uh, Nathan and Nicholas and, and Destiny, Michael, Dustina. Thank you for blessing Jackie Fisher, uh, Christy Carpenter, uh, Terry. Thank you, Father, for blessing all of your people. Thank you for blessing Elijah and all the people in Kenya. Lord God, we praise you. Thank you for blessing Monica and all the people in Sweden. We praise you. We give you the glory. Thank you for blessing Abel Carl and all the people in Cameroon. Oh, God, we thank you that you're shutting down that plague of Ebola in Central Africa. We give you the glory. Thank you, Father, for blessing the United States of America. Thank you for blessing our president. Thank you for blessing our leaders. Thank you, Father, that you're giving us peace in this land. Thank you that you're raising up an army of believers who will worship you in spirit and in truth. And we thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, let the church say, Amen, Amen.